Hey guys, so today we're gonna be looking at what we got going on in the shop. Um, we have this Denali, uh, it's a 2,500 I believe. It's a 3,500. So we got this 3,500 Denali that uh, Jason is working on. We're doing a uh, Cognito leveling kit. We're gonna be doing the amp steps on it. They will also be changing the wheels and tires on it. So it'll have a lift, amp steps. Steps are done. And a rear helper back kit. With a wireless air compressor set up. So he'll be able to hook to a trailer from inside of his cab, won't have to get out or nothing, push a button on like a wireless remote, looks like a garage door opener. It'll air up the back, level it out, and he can tow his trailer level, safe, be able to steer and stop like normal. We also have Mike Porter's uh, unibody here. It's a 61 Ford. Oh yeah, this is super badass. x pipes badass. Uh, I'm a Ford guy myself, so can't wait till we hear that Coyote motor uh, once the exhaust is all finished. We got uh, Dino 76 Dually here as well. Uh, we're doing a chopping block That's upper rad. and lower control arm. That's rad. Uh, honestly, and look at the quality on this. Um, we got Slam Specialty 7s on the front, which we have on the shelf, so we were able to just grab them um, and install those. Uh, we're doing a CVT, it's not a CVT. We're also gonna be doing an Indo VT, which is a... On the YouTube. Uh, you're good. Thanks, there you Last go, thank you. you. Yes. We're doing an AccuAir Indo VT. So this dually, since we're only gonna be bagging the front, Since we're only gonna be bagging the front of this dually, we decided to go with the VT23, which is the three gallon, two valve setup. And we're also gonna be running a Viair 485 compressor. Um, this Acura tank is perfect because it's gonna fit right where the spare used to be. Robbie was able to fit this where the spare tire went. Uh, so it made it easy to install. One cool thing about this is the valve setup is right inside of the tank. So you just have your lines going to each bag. Uh, since we're only doing the front, you can adjust how fast or how slow they go up and down. Um, you have your exhaust right here. You just plug your uh, wiring in and you're good to go. Sure. All right. Well, all right. My man, our number one installer right here. Any, any questions, switch suspension. Ooh, Robbie, what are these? Tell me about them. Well, Jason, this is the RTX series gauges from Dakota Digital for the square body Chevrolet pickup. The gauges that we got from Dakota Digital are their RTX series. And what's cool about these is the truck we're working on is a 76 and these are 76 to 78 specific. And what they are is a, a retro style look. Digital readouts down here, that's crazy. Billet centers, yes. very cool. Yes, all electronic gauges. Amazing. Just another great product from the guys at Dakota Digital just a more modern and better looking gauge. All right, so I decided to bypass the factory wire harness for the fuel gauge because it was a mess. People had been in there, cut, spliced, things weren't hooked up right. So I ran my own wire all the way from the fuel level sender up through the firewall and to the, to the Dakota digital module. And now when you turn it on, we got a working fuel gauge. All right, well, we got oil pressure. We're good. Uh, I had that specially prepared so it wouldn't be greasy for you. That's that year that they put like fur on the frame or something, some kind of protection. That's how Stanny, man, got it. You crushed it. So now we got chopping block front arms, yeah, block upper and lower, which thanks Vince, those are bitching. Yeah, we had to cut the mufflers and tailpipes off in order to lower the rear. You can take this truck, sister kiss. I'm willing to bet that this was a, a work truck of some sort, had a flatbed on it, because there's an old license plate bracket still attached to the frame rail behind the bumper. Oh yeah, straight pipe. It's Wayne, I know that dude, I know that dude. What's this one? Okay, here it is right here. The perfect example. I'm currently building this exact same truck. I did a Belltech lowering kit, blah, blah, blah. I got dually fenders. What did you do to clear? And I'm like, we have the wrong wheels. Yeah. I'm like, that's what I wanted to say. I was like, well, you got the wrong wheels. You need to contact Lowboy. And, and so 
like I have like five or six of these messages right now about these wheels and I'm like, hey, I didn't know how to fix it either until like you fixed it for me. I was like, all I knew the semi wheels, I didn't know that there was like a different decked wheel or shorter well, wheel. Well, what it is is we're using a, a nine inch wide steer wheel on the back outer. That, that, oh, that makes sense. That offset allows us with, with the machining that we do on the inside wheel sucks it up just perfectly. That makes sense, job. that makes sense. Because I, I I thought maybe one of the wheels were more narrow on the, but I, you can't tell after you machine them. And that was pretty cool how the one inside wheels you oblong the holes. So it doesn't stand out that it's obvious that something, yeah, something's going slick, on. Yeah, that's pretty slick, yeah. What we do is we start off with a, uh, an Alcoa wheel. We, we, we prefer to use Alcoa or Accuride just because of the quality. It's kind of like a Nike versus Payless type thing. The Alcoa wheels are substantially lighter than your, your off-brand, your Gemsey wheels. Uh, the polish also comes out a lot easier than on the knockoff wheels. So we order just over the counter, uh, 22, five, eight and a quarters. Uh, there's three standard sizes in these wheels typically. With the advent of the, uh, the super singles, there's a couple different sizes, but it's typically a 22.5, uh, seven and a half, 22.5, eight and a quarter, and then a 22.5, nine. You take that factory wheel, uh, the aluminum wheel allows us to manipulate the bead seat uh, to mimic a passenger car, whole size tire bead seat. On Dino's truck, we're using uh, eight and a quarters on the front, eight and a quarters on the inside, and then what ends up being a nine inch wide steer wheel, we're using it on the outside rear. As you can see right there, I mean that profile, and first of all, you would never know that that's a more shallower wheel than the normal dually style wheel. I met Todd like, I don't know, 15 years ago, 19 20, 20, years ago. 20? Yeah, 19 years ago. He had one of the first OBS duallys laid out, single cab, probably the same trick you have now. Uh, I got rid of it a couple years ago, but yeah, I mean, I yeah, had, I I mean, had dually forever. I think super I sick. We, yeah, we met in a parking lot, then he was one of the first guys to ever see had the new 08 body style truck and he juiced it four, four pump four pumps on 24s laid body and it was crazy because at that time even though Dell kind of got credit for the hubcap wheel you had it first even though he seems to be a little underground and I don't know why that is because you've I'm, built I'm okay with it though yeah he's really really mainstream as far as like everybody in Arizona knows and we're lucky because we have so many quality guys that build stuff that are sharp like this cat and and the truth is like He's been so on top of the dually thing, innovating. He makes his own front end, his own control arms. Yep. Narrowed all that stuff and everything. I got a chance to drive in one of the OBS duallys you built, uh, Eric. Oh, the, the standard cab short bed yeah, you made. I was, gonna, I was gonna buy that truck. Well, the orange one, the oh, four door. The white one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was gonna buy that truck and I got a chance to drive it. It was the first thing I ever saw with semis that blew my mind. It was crazy. And it worked and it was, you know, that was 10 years ago. That was, uh, we. Oh, 08, 09 is when we finalized that truck, yeah. So it was a right long right time ago, but so like, all the dually questions you guys are calling me about, I, I'm not the dude, this is the cat you need to talk to. Low Boy Motorsports is the guy that has the knowledge, builds all the pieces for it, understands how to lay the truck out safely, properly, and he builds a wheel that, see, I, actually I've had another set of your wheels. I had a actually, set of- all, all the duallys you've had, I've had your wheels on them, yeah, on exactly them. right, yeah. So I had a big whole set of wheels on my uh, six-ton truck. So if you ever think about a six-ton truck with milled wheels, it's, it's on the it's inside. It's actually the bead seat of the tire that engages on the inside of the tire. So that's what the whole thing gets really confused about is that people are like, oh, you trim the outside of the tire. No, you mill the step down that the bead actually, and so that's what makes it safer because if, you, if you're trying to run a, a a regular wheel that's not machined, there's a tapered bead seat. And what happens with higher pressures, higher loads, uh, hard cornering, whatnot, um, that tire will actually slip off the bead seat. So what we're doing is machining, machining that bead seat to, to prevent that and then allow us to align, or not align, but uh, balance the wheel as well. The truth is I've seen lots of guys tow with these tires and stuff like that and kick the inside dually off, like the tire off, like nonstop. We gotta, I mean, for, for you guys that are stretching tires, stop it. So what's cool about these, these are brand new wheels. So these are not cut out of a scrapyard, 400 million mile tire or truck tires. A lot of, uh, you gotta be weary of your, your used wheels because a lot of times they'll take, they'll, they'll come off a half a, million, a half a million mile truck and you know usually it's a steering wheel holder so they'll have chunks and stuff in them. Oh um, yeah. It's not necessarily a bad thing to find used wheels. Uh, you just want to make sure that they're round because what happens is over time, this outside bead seat on a used high mile wheel will actually start to mushroom in. 
front and back, we just opened the holes up to three inches on this one. So three inches on the rear outer wheel, three inches on the front wheel, and then we actually uh, put an ellipsoid or a large oval on the inside wheel so that when you look at it, nothing stands out that something... Yeah, you're something missing weird. the hole, which I thought was pretty slick. If you don't know, it just looks like it's supposed to be there. If you do know, you know, you're in tune with the little little idiosyncrasies that make this truck unique. On Facebook too? Uh, Facebook is actually local motion. Yeah, so, or you can call Switch and then they can put you in contact with him or however absolutely, you want to do it. Absolutely. But he's local, he's been around since I think I had black hair and you had more hair, but right. well, he still has a lot I didn't hair. have my solar panel yet. Yeah, he's still doing good though. What? Uh, this Nova belongs to Ashley, yeah, our, um, our real boss. The actual boss around here. Um, and just had some runnability issues, have never been diagnosed, and so we're just gonna go through it and fix up the little little things here and there it needs to make it more reliable and more fun to drive. Um, we're diagnosing a ignition problem with this Nova. Um, it's not getting the correct voltage to the coil, which is causing it to be very hard to start. It's a Chevy Nova, commonly known as the poor man's Camaro. I've been working with Jason since for 41 years, I guess. Since I'm 44, and that was when he was born. Okay. So yeah, we've been working together like 41 years. Yeah, nothing on that one. So we'll grab that guy. Yeah, I can fade right off of that one and run a wire out. Yeah, I'll leave that. Oh, so get everything yeah. off of the coil except for the coil. Yeah, because you're not technically supposed to jump off the coil to the choke. Or off the cliff for that matter. I was little. And uh, my mom said, you're gonna have a baby brother. And I was like, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't want that. And she's like, well, this is the way it's gonna be. And I said, well, can I move? Then I came along and the world found out what cool was all about. Ever since then, it's taken longer to get things done. Oh, Extra. hey, Rob Francis took his truck to Speed Sports. He did a cam and heads, got another 100 horse out of it. Oh, uh, sure. He's all excited. All right, when the police get here, we'll tell them that Edgar came at us. What are you doing? This is my job. I'm helping. No. You don't even know what you're doing, James. I'm cutting zip ties. This is the problem with you. You come out here, you wait for me to diagnose it, then you run to the bar, you tell him that you diagnosed it. I diagnosed it before you the got car got fuel here. Pump. I was gonna reuse that one. Well, originally I thought you were making the uh, hard line and Seth had asked me to see if I could look at the ignition. But I was just told to fix the Nova. Can I so. work on the hard line or you want to try and a combo. fix this? <sighs> do whatever. Just do something. <clears throat> Feel it coming in the air tonight. I tried coming in the air one time. Got it all over my soul. So, one of the things we could discuss right now is the recent change in the law on carrying nunchucks. See? They changed the law and now making it legal to carry nunchucks. So I hope to see some ninja battles breaking out soon. I know I'll be carrying mine again. I'm actually going to go to Cruise to the Pines this weekend and start a fight with my set. I'm gonna pick a random person in the crowd and beat the holy hell out of them with nunchucks. Yeah. We just recently went to Cruise to the Pines. Basically, we all meet up. Cadillacs freaking got the balance right on the ground, rolled under it. We went to the Fry's and met up with everybody else for the cruise. Uh, Perfect Poise puts this, this cruise on every year. Is it a CTSV? Yeah. Be a whole lot cooler if it was. From there, you know, yeah, my girlfriend cool. jumped in with me. James and Jason had their families all with them. And then we took off from the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there was a fuel stop about halfway in Congress where everybody stops for fuel and hangs out for a minute. About halfway there, I think. This is Congress. Uh, just a fuel stop. Everybody pulls in, gets some gas if they need to, grab a drink or whatever, but I'm going to hit the pisser. I don't know. Well, we turned back around. Well, you hurried. When you turned around, I couldn't get over. Oh, okay. So I just went down and flipped around. Oh. By then, they'd open the, the ramp. Well, that was when we made the U-turn. There was a little bit of a mix-up down there where the road was closed for a minute. That was that was interesting. I almost got stuck trying to turn around. I was a little worried driving the van up here. It's my first time driving it far. I usually just drive it around town, so I was a little concerned, but that thing is doing amazing. The weather, perfect, and then take off from there. There's a lot of winding, you know, a lot of winding road, awesome scenery. Basically just cruise all the way up to Prescott to Lake, what's the lake name? What's the lake? 
What's the lake up there at Prescott? Watson Lake. Watson Lake, okay. So yeah, we just take the cruise and uh, casually go up to Prescott, Arizona. We get to Watson Lake, and then that's where the car show's at. Hey, it's Richard Rachi from Severed Ties, Arizona, and I'm here at Cruise to the Pines uh, 2019, one of my favorite shows. I brought up my Azuzu pickup that's uh, just hanging out over there, but uh, I'd rather uh, talk about my gear today. I got an awesome Cruise to the Pines hat that uh, my fiance made, Lindsay. I had to do the matching with the Severed Ties pink shirt to the pink socks to the Vans pink van so I always have to uh, match everything and uh, that's what I'm doing today in this beautiful day in Prescott Arizona it's so stay tuned because the next episode we're gonna continue with our cruise to the pine footage and I'm gonna kick Jason's ass